my God, people are getting shot, dude. It's not a dream. I'm not asleep. This is actually happening. There was bodies falling down. The guy next to me was shot. Blood everywhere. We have not 20, but 50 casualties. This was an act of terror and an act of hate. There's no way to describe it other than horrific and unimaginable. 49 people murdered at a gay nightclub in Orlando. It's called Pulse. And the man who did the shooting claimed allegiance with ISIS in a 911 call. And this whole situation has reignited the gun control debate, both north and south of the border. And how could it not, really? Uh, Just a quick recap for anyone who's been um, not paying attention to the news. The shooter, he opened fire. It was about 2 in the morning on a Sunday morning as the people were getting ready to leave the club. It had been a you know, regular Saturday night. Everyone had been having a good time. And he came into the club armed with an AR-15 style assault rifle and a 9mm pistol. He bought these weapons at a Florida gun store recently in the month of June, and the owner of the store did end up speaking to the media yesterday, and here's what he had to say. I would like to avoid any political issues and stick to the facts regarding this case. An evil person came in here and illegally purchased two firearms from us, and if he hadn't purchased them from us, I'm sure he would have gotten them from another local gun store in the area. This man held multiple security licenses. He had an armed and an unarmed license. He passed the background check that every single person that purchases a firearm in the state of Florida undergoes. Now that's Ed Hansen. He's the owner of the St. Lucie Shooting Center. That's the gun store where the Orlando shooter purchased a rifle and a handgun recently. And Hansen, this is the owner, he's a former New York police officer. Yeah, he's uh, got quite the experience with all of this, yes. Yeah, he retired in 2002, and he also addressed questions as to whether the shooter bought body armor from him. There have been a couple questions directed to me regarding whether this evil person bought body armor here. Number one, he's familiar to me, vaguely. I don't know him personally. He's been here. Obviously, he purchased two guns legally. I have no recollection of anybody asking for body armor, number one. Number two, we've never sold body armor. And we don't currently sell any body armor. I guess it would have been just easy to say, no, I didn't sell him body armor. Yeah, but but he made the explanation. So we're kind of comparing what the different rules, regulations are south of the border and north of the border. Because when we do see these mass shootings occur in the United States, as they all too frequently do, we tend to look at them and say, oh, they need more gun control, they need more gun control. But also, how do we deal with it here? The conversation does kind of move back a little closer to home. So Sure it does. We're going to have somebody on to explain that for us a little bit le- later. Yeah, and we're also going to Sheldon- ask you if you ever need to really actually have one. Yeah, Sheldon Clare from the Canadian yeah. National Firearms Association is going to be joining us uh, in just a few minutes. But in Florida, it's not that tough if you want to buy an assault-style rifle. You have to be 18, got to be a U.S. resident, legal resident, can't be a felon or a domestic abuser, can't have any documented mental health or substance abuse issues. So documented, that means somebody has to have tried to throw you into a a mental health institution or have it be that some kind of a criminal record has revealed that you uh, had a DUI or that you had a problem with drinking or drugs. Yeah, and Florida has some kind of basic rules that kind of encompass some of that. So if it's a federally licensed dealer that you're purchasing from, which would be the case here, say for St. Lucie Shooting Center, you have to have a background check. Okay. Whether you have a concealed weapons permit or not, doesn't matter. You have to get a background check. Now, there's no waiting period to buy a rifle. None. Oh, that's reassuring. None. A three-day waiting period to buy a handgun, and for that you have to be 21, not 18. If you've been charged or convicted of a felony, you can't buy guns. If you've been convicted of two or more DUIs, been involuntarily committed to a mental health hospital, or have a restraining order against you, you can't buy guns. But here's the problem. If you are getting a gun from a private sale, you don't need to have a background check. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, when I said, here's the problem, yeah. it, like, it, like yeah. that was the only problem with all of this. But um, you do require in Florida training and a background check before you can get a license to carry a gun in public. And there are a lot, 1.6 million concealed weapons permit holders in, in there. So now, and, and this the assault style rifles too incredibly popular. Three to five million of them in the US. The US has more guns per capita than any country in the world. 
But it breaks down on political lines when these types of things happen. Mm. This is a conversation between President Barack Obama and a gun store owner during a PBS show. This is in Indiana. This is just 10 days before the Orlando killings and illustrates some of the divided thinking in the U.S. Knowing that we apply common sense to other issues in our society, specifically like holding irresponsible people accountable for their actions when they drink and drive and kill somebody. And we do that without restricting control of cars and cell phones to the rest of us, the good guys. Why then do you and Hillary want to control and restrict and limit gun manufacturers, gun owners, and the responsible use of guns and ammunition to the rest of us, the good guys, instead of holding the bad guys accountable for their actions. First of all, uh, the notion that I or Hillary or Democrats or whoever you want to choose are hell-bent on taking away folks' guns is just not true. And, and I don't care how many times the NRA says it. I'm about to leave office. There have been more guns sold since I've been president than just about any time in U.S. history. There are, there are enough guns for every man, woman, and child in this country. And at no point have I ever, per, ever proposed confiscating guns from responsible gun owners. So it's just not true. What I have said is precisely what you suggested, which is why don't we treat this like every other thing that we use? I, I just came from a meeting today in the Situation Room in which I've got people who we know have been on ISIL websites, living here in the United States, U.S. citizens, and we're allowed to put them on the no-fly list when it comes to airlines, but because of the National Rifle Association, I cannot prohibit those people from buying a gun. This is somebody who is a known ISIL sympathizer, and if he wants to walk in to a gun store or a gun show right now and buy as much, as many weapons as ammo as, as he can, nothing's prohibiting him from doing that, even though the FBI knows who that person is. So, sir, I, I just have to say respectfully that there is a way for us to have common sense gun laws. There is a way for us to make sure that lawful, responsible gun owners like yourself are able to use it for sporting, hunting, protecting yourself. But the only way we're going to do that is if we don't have a situation in which anything that is proposed is viewed as some tyrannical destruction of the Second Amendment. And that's how the issue too often gets framed. That was President Barack Obama just 10 days before the Orlando killings. Uh, and it was at, uh, they had a PBS town hall meeting in Elkhart, Indiana, and there was a gun store owner that asked him. And, you know, in essence saying, why, why do you, you want to take, take our, our guns? guns? Yeah, like you hear all the time. So this debate, of course, Dave, is continuing mm-hmm. south of the border, closest uh, closer to home as well. What are the laws around AR-15 style weapons in Canada. And the reason I say AR-15 style weapons is that's a brand name, Mm -hmm. AR-15. That's owned by Colt. And so basically, because we've had somebody text in, what are those? It's a military style rifle. That's what it is. But we'll get into that a little bit further. Sheldon Clare from the Canadian National Firearms Association joins us next on News Talk 980 CJME 650 CKOF. Welcome to a beautiful Tuesday afternoon in Saskatchewan. I'm Jill Slater with Dave Arnold on Main Street. I really hope you get a chance to get outside and enjoy that nice weather. We could be seeing some showers over the next couple of days in parts of the province, so enjoy it now while you can. Coming up in the show, a Saskatchewan man reclaiming some of his heritage from overseas. Uh, Not just for himself, though. He's reclaiming it for others as well. We'll explain all of that at 3 o'clock. First, though, the shootings at the gay nightclub Pulse in Orlando have once again touched off the gun control debate in both the U.S. and here at home. 
and it was a Sig Sauer rifle that was used in the killing of 49 people in the wee hours of Sunday morning. Some have referred to it as an AR-15 style or type rifle, or some have used it, uh, called it an assault style rifle. So what is legal in Canada and what is not? Here to walk us through the ins and outs of Canada's firearm laws is Sheldon Clare. He's the president of the National Firearm Association. Sheldon, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, For those who aren't familiar or not rifle or gun enthusiasts or aficionados, what's a AR-15 style, what's a military style, assault style rifle? In this case, we're hearing it was a a Sig Sauer. How, How would you describe that group? Well... The, the 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 type of rifle that it's called an AR-15 is one of the most popular semi-automatic rifles in North America today. Uh, it's the it's the modern sporting rifle. It's the technological advancement of a design from the 1950s, uh, intended for the civilian market, and later modified to be sold to the military in in what was was a a, a select fire or fully automatic mode. And some people refer to this type of uh, fully automatic firearm as an assault rifle, but the uh, semi-automatic versions available to uh, to civilians are certainly not assault rifles. Yeah, and that's a distinction that that a lot of people in the media or those that aren't familiar with guns don't seem to realize. The ones in the military, that's what we know uh, as the M16s, right? Well, in that Canada, was what became the military seven, version? Yeah, the, the mm-hmm. M16 series was used in the Vietnam War, right. replacing earlier uh, firearms. Uh, and in Canada, we have a variant of that known as the C7 and C8 series right. uh, that our military uses. And these are also have a, a, a select fire option. So, Sheldon, yeah. if you're somebody like me that knows nothing about guns, I'm just wondering, how many bullets can it shoot? How fast? Well, it doesn't matter, actually. None of that actually matters. What really matters is the intention of the person using it. There's nothing wrong with with firearms that shoot faster or slower or anything like that. See, I would disagree because it would tell you what the death toll is going to be. Let me finish then. Let me finish. Yep, go ahead. The, the, The thing that matters is the intention of the person. If a person is dangerous with a rock, they're dangerous with anything else. If a person is safe, they're safe. And there's nothing that is going to make anyone any safer by changing the features of a of a an inanimate object. Okay, but how fast can it shoot? How fast can what shoot? An AR-15 style rifle, how fast can it shoot? Well, it can't shoot by itself. It has to have a person shooting it. Can okay. you answer my question? I did. No, you didn't. A rifle does not fire by itself. No, I understand that. So if I was holding this, how fast could I shoot it? Well, it depends if you had any training. If you had, if you had some training, you could probably shoot it in a competitive match relatively quickly. How fast could you shoot it. it then? How fast could I shoot it? Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd never really worried about it. I used to compete in some disciplines where I'd have to fire uh, rapidly, but uh, semi-automatic will fire as fast as you pull the trigger. And you press every shot. Every time you press the trigger, it will fire a shot and reload. Thank you. That shouldn't have been that hard. We're talking to Sheldon Clare. Well, well, He's president no, of the is, National is, Firearm Association. We're chatting with him on Main Street today on News Talk 980 CJME 650 CKOM. And we're talking about the rifle that was a, that was used in this sh- shooting, in the Orlando shooting, and trying to get a sense of what the rules are here. And I do appreciate the sentiment and 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 the truth that the, it's the intention behind that matters. So as it is right now, Sheldon, is it easy or difficult to get these guns? Well, it depends. If you're a crook, it's relatively easy. And if you're an innocent citizen, it's not. Well, let's work on the assumption that most of our listeners are law-abiding citizens. What would be the process or the rules around ownership of this style of firearm in Canada? Well, in Canadian law, there are three classes of firearm, prohibited, restricted, and non-restricted. There are some subdivisions in those classes, but that's the general layout of it. Mm-hmm. If, if, a, if you're looking at an AR-15-type firearm, of which there are many makes, models, and brands, because they're so, so uh, popular for a variety of uh, purposes, and, and these rifles were non-restricted for a long time, then they were made restricted for a short period of time, then they were non-restricted, and then they were made restricted again, and this occurred through successive governments. They're currently classed as restricted. What that means is that you are required to take a particular course to get a possession acquisition license, 
uh, the two day course or, or, or one day course, depending on, on what, what you're, what you're doing. Uh, you write a test, you're, you're given a practical exam, and then you apply for your license. And there's a, there's an assessment process that goes along with that. If you're approved and you get your license and you want to purchase uh, the, an AR-15, you also must have it. It would also be registered at the point of purpose. And the rest restricted uh, aspect of it merely is a limitation on what you're illegally allowed to do with it. Mm-hmm. Non-restricted firearms, for example, you can take hunting, and use, use for personal protection, that sort of thing. Uh, a restricted firearm is basically limited to purposes prescribed in the uh, in the law. Uh, the main one that most people use these for is for target practice at an approved range, and you have to have a special uh, authorization to transport to take those to a range. Now, of course, if you were going to go rob a Seven Eleven, none of that applies. Mm-hmm. That would be the non-law gun-abiding citizen that, that we. Uh Sometimes do have listened to us, but again, most of us responsible gun owners in this province. Sheldon Clare is with us on Main Street on News Talk 980 CJME, 650 CKOM. He's the president of the National Firearm Association. Of course, the gun control debate continues to bubble to the surface anytime there are mass shootings or mass killings, as we predominantly see in the United States. It's it's on the radar once again south of the border. And we eventually end up having the discussion here as we kind of reflect and look south, I think, to our neighbors there. So, well, we seem heavily influenced by what goes on in the United States, mm. and it, there are there are of course significant differences. I mean, I I teach Canadian history in my day job. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a volunteer as the president of the National Firearms Association. But one one of the things I often ask people is, "What is a Canadian?" And it, it's really quite amusing that people really have a lot of trouble saying what a Canadian is. And one of the differences in terms of firearms is we tend to own more rifles and shotguns, and Americans tend to own more sh- uh, shorter firearms like handguns. That's a, that's a statistical difference. But in terms of crime rates, uh, one of the things that I think we, people need to understand is that the Canadian research is very, very clear that none of our legislative uh, actions taken from the 70s on forward have had anything to do with any reduction in violence, violent crime rates, or anything to do with use of firearms in, in criminal activity. What in, instead seems to be influencing any drop is the aging demographics. demographics. Yes. Yeah, decreasing exactly. murder rates since 1970 across Canada, as I, as I believe. That's right. So, um, it's a, so Sheldon, when you, look, when you do look south of the border, and you look, and I, I would argue that they're, they do have a gun issue and a gun problem south of the border, Actually, they've we, managed to reduce their they've actually managed to reduce their crime rate substantially over pa- the past several years. So when you look at a country that has such a huge population, I think it's around four hundred million or something. You, you like can look that at the now. population. They have five percent of the world's population. They have thirty one percent of the mass shootings around the world. If you categorize, I believe, by four or more uh, deaths or injuries in a single incident, we can get into the statistics and everything else. But bring it closer to home, Sheldon. Why why the semi why the semi automatic style rifle, uh, and I'm assuming you wanted to see it non-restricted once again. Uh, who is that for? Is that for the hunter? Do they not have adequate firearms to, to hunt now? The, the, the firearms are used for much more than hunting, but you need to understand that the semi-automatic action is over 100 years old. Mm-hmm. Oh, I understand I, it's I, a, I, over 100 years old. If I could just really bluntly ask you, why do we need one? Why not? Do you, what, do you well, because you them? kill people with them. Crazy well, people get the know, guns and they kill people with them. That's why. That's why not. So can you tell me why you should have yeah, one? That's a thing. And this interview is now over. Goodbye. Sheldon Clare, folks, that is the president of the National Firearm Association, uh, seeming rather unwilling to answer a question about why or how fast they can go either, unfortunately. But it's just a showing of how heated this discussion gets because immediately people are what I mean and I don't blame either side for getting excited about it right you've got people that are responsible that feel persecuted that feel that the rules are unduly harsh for people that are responsible gun responsible owners. gun owners and yeah. I get that I get shooting guns how fun is that of course it's fun of course it's fun. And then you've got other people on the side going, you know what? Um, they're not safe for some people. We need to make it more difficult for people to get guns. And then you also do have people of get rid of all the guns, which there needs to be a happy medium here. There needs to be a happy medium. So we're asking you, should 
there be tougher restrictions on assault-style rifles in Canada, or should the rules be relaxed? Oh my God, people are getting shot, dude. This is not a dream, I'm not asleep, this is actually happening. There was bodies falling down, the guy next to me was shot. Blood everywhere. We have not 20, but 50 casualties. This was an act of terror and an act of hate. There's no way to describe it other than horrific and unimaginable. Yeah, the terror attack on the on our Orlando LGBT nightclub early Sunday morning has, of course, re-triggered the gun control debate in the U.S., this time in the middle of a presidential election. Using an assault-style rifle and a pistol, the shooter killed 49 and wounded 53 others before he was killed in an exchange of gunfire with police. It was a Sig Sauer rifle, is what the reports are out today from Orlando. It's a semi-automatic rifle. It's designed to be an effective killing machine if that's the purpose it is turned towards. Some use it for hunting. Some use it for sport. More and more, though, it's becoming the weapon of choice for gunmen in mass shootings. That AR-15 style weapon. Yeah, you've got San, San Bernardino. Bernardino, the Aurora Theater, you've got Sandy Hook, and now Pulse Nightclub. And this is a gun that's become known as America's gun. Mm-hmm. And so it's both beloved to the American people and hated and viled, uh, reviled at the same time because of these shootings. It's, it's um, you know, look, the, the restrictions to get one of these is much tighter in Canada. Is it time to look at our access to these rifles? We had just last month a Conservative MP, Bob Zimmer from BC, he tabled a petition calling on the government to reclassify the AR-15, this this rifle as a non-restricted weapon, meaning you could use it outside of the fire range. You could use it for hunting. Mm-hmm. And there is that push out there to be able to use this this for hunting. So he tabled that petition on behalf of a firearms advocate in, uh, in the Maritimes out of Newfoundland. So we're asking you today, should there be tougher restrictions on assault-style rifles in Canada, or should the rules be relaxed? one 7275 The text line is 306 306- 306. You don't need it. You want it. Sorry, my safety comes first. If it means that it's difficult for you to get, it means it's difficult for a person that's deranged to get. And if it means that that I never get a call saying, Mrs. Slater, I'm sorry, there's been a shooting at your kid's school and, and K-Man's not going to make it. If it means I don't get that phone call, then I'm sorry if you have to go through a few extra hoops to be able to get an assault style rifle for fun. I like the way the rules are now. I, I like it as a restricted weapon. I like that uh, there's an extra degree of control over it. Uh, I like the fact you can only use it at an approved shooting range, and you need to have a, a certificate to to, uh, to to transport it. I, I think we're in the sweet spot with this. I truly do. But what do you think? one 300 And we go to uh, Chris in, uh, in uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Chris, yeah, Chris in Wawoda. Wawoda. Uh Chris, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well... There's no way to effectively ban a semi-automatic version of any kind of rifle, and to, to paint the AR separately is really kind of silly if you know too much about firearms. I mean, there's several, several other options in the exact same caliber semi-automatic weapons that function exactly the same as an AR that you can buy that are non-restricted today. Okay, thanks for the tip on that. one 7275 Albert, near Moose Jaw on the line. What do you say? Should we toughen up these restrictions or let them loose a bit? Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize on behalf of this AR-15 owner for uh, Sheldon Quire. Oh. We uncalled for. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. As far as a uh, uh, want or a need versus a want, uh, I, I didn't need an AR-15. I could have spent $1,000 on something else, uh, but I wanted one. Mm. And you should be uh, able to have one if you're not a danger to the rest of us. And, and I do have one. I jumped through all the hoops. I've done all the background checks. I'm scrutinized, not monthly, not weekly, every day because I own an AR-15. It falls under the restricted class of firearms, and it gives the RCMP the right to check my background every day. If a red flag pops up, they could pull my license. That turns me into a criminal. Why is that worth it for you, Albert? Well, you, you know, for me, it's it's 
being able to go out to the gun range, mm -hmm. set up the target, walk a distance away, whether it's 100 yards or 150 yards, and and have a round come out of that rifle that comes to as close to the bullseye as I can get it. That sounds much fun. The, much in the way a golfer sits on the tee box at a par three and wants to get that hole in one. No kidding. Oh, that sounds like a blast. And I'm I'm sorry if many gun owners feel like they are persecuted just for that sport, that, that love of it. I mean, I would have no problem of most of the gun owners I know having one of these. But I also think you should have to jump through those hoops. You know, I, I really, I really do. Just because the safety of the masses is, is so much more important to me. Up next